Well, welcome everyone to our end of term assembly and our end of 2020 assembly. What a year it's been. As you can see, I've been really busy decorating my office. I'm thinking it's looking pretty Christmassy. And I'm starting finally to feel a little Christmassy as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, um, I hope you are too. It's been a long, hard term. We've all had to work together really well. And uh, I know this last couple of weeks has been challenging as more of you have had to self isolate and uh, we've had to be working remotely. But I just want to thank you all for the way that you've worked with us over this, this last term. I want to thank your parents and families for their support. And of course, I particularly want to thank the teachers and support staff team here at Shenley and the governing body for their support as we've got to this particular end of term. I just want to say students, I'm really proud of you, I'm very proud to be your head teacher, and it's great to have this opportunity just to kind of sign off on a difficult term in a nice way and uh, look forward to the future. Now, the future is, of course, unpredictable. Uh, we still have some challenges ahead of us. We still have some difficult decisions to make. Your parents know that I tend to find things out at the same time as anyone else. So I will see something on the news and then have to decide what do we do about it? And just today, we've been learning about home testing, we've been learning about testing in school, and we've been learning about the start of term possibly looking different than we thought it would. And at the minute, I haven't got the answers for all of that. I've got lots of reading to do, lots of questions to ask, lots of meetings to have, but you know that I will inform you of what's happening as soon as I'm able, and hopefully as clearly and helpfully as possible. But that's enough about all of this. I don't know about you, but I've been finding my assemblies pretty boring and um, that's because I've not been able to do what I would normally like to do. I haven't been telling jokes and funny stories or using PowerPoints or involving people from the students in front of me. Um, I've just been really telling you what you can do and what you can't do because that's been the priority. So I wanted to finish term just by telling you a little story that I sometimes think about at Christmas time. It's a story about a a boy is about eight or nine years old and he doesn't have a great time. Things are difficult in his family and as a result, they decide that he should go and live with his grandfather. So he does. And his grandfather says to him, right, this is your chance to turn things around. I want your very best behaviour. And the boy just says, but why, Grandad? I can't see the point. And Grandad says, well, let me tell you that Father Christmas always comes to my house first out of anywhere in the whole world. And let me tell you that if you are a really good boy, better than you've ever been, then I know he will leave you a fantastic present. So the boy thinks about this and he starts changing his behaviour. He starts being polite and kind and helpful. And everybody notices the change in his behaviour. And it comes to Christmas Eve and he says to his granddad, do you think granddad that I have been good enough to make sure I get a really good present from Father Christmas? And granddad just says, well, wait and see. You need to go to bed now, you need to go to sleep and let's see what happens in the morning. So the boy goes up to his bedroom and he gets, gets ready for bed, he gets under the covers, turns the light, he's turned the light out. He starts thinking, do you know what, I have been good. I have been really good. I have been better than I have ever been. And do you know what? Because Father Christmas comes to this house first, he must have all of the presents for all of the children in the world. And I think because I have been so well behaved, I deserve more than just one present. He dozes off, dreaming of a big, bag full of gifts and he hears a noise and he kind of comes around and, and opens his eyes and he can see a large figure wearing red clothes with a white trim and a big white beard and a red hood with a white bobble on top and he thinks it's true it's Father Christmas he's come to my house my bedroom before anywhere else and he can see that Father Christmas has got this huge sack of presents. So he waits until Father Christmas turns round and bends over to put a gift by the side across the room. 
and he doesn't waste a second. He quickly picks up something from next to his bed that's quite heavy, whacks Father Christmas over the head as hard as he can, picks up the sack of gifts and starts running out the bedroom and down the stairs. And as he runs down the stairs from his bedroom, he can hear his grandfather's voice saying, somebody's hit me, help, somebody's hit me. It's interesting and unusual Christmas story, but it reminds me that although we often say Christmas is a time to think of others, we can be quite selfish at Christmas. You know, one of the things you find in my job working with young people over a period of time is you find that there are different fashionable presents every Christmas that everybody wants. They're like the must have presents. You know, one year it was scooters, another year it was mobile phones, another year it was headphones that you couldn't see, they were so tiny. Another year it was headphones that were so big, people were walking around looking like Mickey Mouse. And I know when I open the school doors on the first day of January, most years, I can hear the conversations as the students come in and they're all saying, what you get, what you get, what you get, what you get. Never heard anyone say, what did you give? Now this Christmas is gonna be different as we know. We won't be with as many people as we normally would. We won't be necessarily able to do the things that we love to do. But I would like you to think about this little message here about what do you give? I'll tell you one thing you shouldn't give. You shouldn't give anyone else a virus, should you? So staying safe, behaving in the right way is really important. But giving of your generosity, your kindness, your support, your time, spending time with the people that you love, that's gonna be really, really important this time because it will be different and we do need each other. So I'm hoping you like the story and I'm hoping that you understand its meaning. I would kind of sum it up by saying, can you make sure that you give as good as you get this Christmas? Can you make sure that you are as selfless as thinking about yourself and that you take the opportunity to put the people that you're with first, making them that little bit more special? Because you know what? You'll feel better in yourself as well. And as for my Christmas, well, what does a head teacher do over Christmas? Yeah, well, maybe they get ready for the, the staff Christmas party. You know, maybe they uh, look after the school badger. Who knows? I'll have to tell you in the new year, won't I? So thank you very much, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the assembly. Hope you've had a good end of term. Really look forward to seeing you all uh, in the new year. Hoping for a much better year as we all are and uh, stay safe. Happy Christmas. Bye.